I got a comment the other day, it went something like, Looks like you dig full frame and micro four thirds. But what about APS-C? You hate them? Yes. Yes, that is the, what happens here. Today we talk about why I, ow, elite, why I hate APS-C, but love all the others. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. All right, on today's episode of How Not to Die, we're on the Canon EOS R with the Voigtlander 20mm 3.5 with a glimmer glass filter on there. Stop down to 5.6 with just electronic stabe on. No IBIS, no lens stabe. Superior to Sony in every way. And Fuji, APS-C. Let's start there. So full frame, like why do you love it? It seems to be the standard, the recognized, you're a professional now. You have full frame, it's the best. You get your separation, the dynamic range, everything about a full frame image, it's like that's the mountaintop. I know my freaking medium format, you're even better, but like you're so big and pricey at that point, you're not like in anybody's dreams. Nobody's like actually doing that. A couple guys in like Texas, two guys. So all the big companies have a major full frame camera, Canon, Nikon, Sony, those are the top three, then Panasonic tried, and Fuji's down there with APS-C in the middle, trying to be like, hey, us too, we have film sims. And then they leapfrogged everybody to medium format, but it's like, I don't think that's ever gonna take off, only for boring landscape photographers, and it's a nice look. If you ever shrink it down and shrink the price, I might look at you. But Fuji has a lot of issues, and we'll get to that. So full frame, it's just like, it's really nice. Every time I film something, it's like, damn, that full frame is beautiful. But Micro Four Thirds has advantages. Usually they're much smaller and lighter, but Panasonic has been overeating lately on the donuts and they just want to be fat, I think. They just watch TV all day and think, I don't care. Big is beautiful and here I am, hear me roar. And while I'm roaring, please throw an Oreo cookie into my mouth. They're fat. But, like, whatever. They perform nice, and they have the best stave in the business. This is heavy as hell. I need to take periodic breaks. My god. I just made a video on the Vegetable Police channel, but I wasn't using the tripod. I'm testing different things. It was handheld, and it was much lighter than extending it on out there, but hopefully the results pay off on this one. They're not... Oh, puddle. Yes, I do wear socks and sandals, skateboarding in the winter. So when you're talking micro four thirds, it's the lenses that are actually smaller. And you can like, they're so much better for telephoto and traveling and the image is good enough and it's actually more stable and Olympus color science. Can you mess with that? Amazing. Panasonic has gotten much better too. Outdoors, Penny Boy, wow. Especially wildlife, I'm always blown away by Panasonic colors. And then Micro Four Thirds has the advantage of having Leica glass. And the lens is the most important piece of the puzzle. So it's like, when you're talking APS-C, what is your advantage to either of those systems? You have Fuji APS-C, they're in the middle of full frame and Micro Four Thirds. You don't have the sensor size of the full frame or the image quality or the dynamic range. Dynamic range is close. F-Log 2 might even be better than A7S 3 It has a nice film look, but it's just you're not quite there. And when you look backwards at your rivals trying to bite your ass, Micro Four Thirds has better stabe, and they're smaller and lighter and like a glass. And so it's like, what are you doing, Fuji? The stabe, I just do not understand it. Your telephoto stabe is amazing, if not class leading. And then your vlog stabe is the worst talk to each other, departments. And then when it comes to like Canon, Nikon, and Sony APS-C, they're always afterthoughts. Sony's the only one that actually puts like full specs into their APS-C, but it's still a crop. It's not as good as their full frame. A ZV-E1 will kill any APS-C thing. It's like no crop. 4K 120p, 10% crop. Like versus an FX30, Aren't they the same price? Isn't the Sony ZV-E1 cheaper than the FX30? And lighter? What are we doing? So it's like it's an afterthought, and then Canon APS-C is an absolute joke. They have no lenses. 
Only kit lenses. And don't even get me started on Nikon with their APS-C Mimic Monkey technology. Oh no, he's leaping from tree to tree, trying to give me offerings that I already have. We already have it. Is that a hummingbird? Oh man, where is it? Oh God. Nikon has released the same APS-C camera three times now and still no really nice lenses. They do have a wide 12 to 28. I'm curious, but like the Stabe sucks. So until an APS-C body comes with IBIS, you have no chance. So I just haven't been able to find the advantage of most APS-C. I like the Fuji look sometimes, but like their auto white balance, like there's so many magenta shifts. Your face ends up purple. It's tough to get the look you want. You never know if you're actually gonna get it. So like classic neg, beautiful. But like who wants to film in that all the time? It's a gimmick look. It's cool. And it's not like I couldn't do everything I do now on current APS-C cameras, and you'd probably see an improvement. I mean, we're using an old EOS R. If I was using the R7, probably better. We'd have 4K60, 180 frames, super crops on the 4K60, could be cool. It's cool. It's just, I'm thinking long term, it's like, I like prime lenses. You don't have much, and you bore me. So I think the sweet spot is full frame for the ultimate image quality and then like a micro four thirds travel cam. And it's like fantastic if Panasonic would come with a light body. A leaf hit me in the chin, tried to knock me out right on the chin. Uh, they know where they aim. So until I see an APS-C with amazing stabilization, I'm kind of waiting for something fun to happen. I forget if the Canon R7 has IBIS or not. I feel like it doesn't, but maybe it does. That's a lot of dogs. I'm just gonna assume that you might be able to see some of this. Oh, they're all freaking out. Oh, they're all gonna kill me. Uh, they don't like skateboards. Oh God. <laughs> I'll just be leaving. But even if the R7 does have IBIS, you need a wide lens. That 11 to 22 is coming. I don't know, it's just gonna be a kit lens look. I'm looking for some L lenses here. You're never gonna see an L lens APS-C. I doubt it. So APS-C, I don't know. It's not a sweet spot for me. A lot of you think, oh, that's the crop sensor. It's lighter than full frame, just as good. It's not just as good. And it's not as good as micro four thirds nowadays. So Panty Boy has phase detect and super slow-mo, best stave in the business. What could you have asked for? A lot, actually, I do. I'm gonna leave. How you doing? Do you agree? Do you shoot on APS-C? Sony, you're disgusting. Uh, that's good times. You buying a camera, it's a t-shirt. Subscribe for more of an